Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Math and Physics Podcast. I'm your host, Parker. And I'm Ray, and we welcome you to episode 26, where today we actually have a very special guest. We have Steve Chow from the YouTube channel Black Pen Red Pen. So, uh, Steve, do you want to tell us a little bit about what you do? Hello, everybody. Uh, first of all, thank you, Parker and Ray, for having me on your podcast. Um, I'm a teacher at a community community college. I teach math full time, and on the side, I have a YouTube channel, Black Pen Red Pen, and on the channel, I do math for you guys. So that's pretty much it. Awesome. That's awesome. Okay, so um, because of the situation right now, you know, because of the pandemic, the COVID situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, and especially because you are a teacher, how has it like affected your teaching? Like, have there been any challenges uh, because of the because of the virus, or have you transferred to an online basis? And how's that been going? Stuff like that. Yeah, because right now everything's online, and then for this mm-hmm. semester we have to teach live on Zoom uh, for my classes. But um, I think I'm okay in terms of the transition because I've been making videos before, so it's not so bad. It's right. quite interesting. Mm-hmm. But of course, I still prefer the in-person uh, setting so I can see the students. I can get the immediate response for the um, students and we can laugh together. I can see everybody. Um, I can move around in the classroom at school, things like that. That's mm-hmm. much better. Mm-hmm. But other than that, um, things are okay. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's easier to deliver the material in person. And I I also prefer, like as a student, being in person in class to really just see somebody teach the material Mm. to me so i can see why you would also prefer that on the other side of the coin as a teacher yeah definitely how about like uh your tests and quizzes and stuff like that have the have you been doing that online and has it been easy as a teacher to grade it and to write it or is it harder um in terms of writing an exam it's the same right but in terms of grading Mm -hmm. a test it's much more difficult because the students (laughs) will have to submit the test on uh, on canvas and I will have to click on the submission and I have to wait for the test to upload, right? To pop out and mm-hmm. uh, Oh yeah. Man, and then like to grade it, I will have to use a stylus and it's 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 not fun to grade the test. Yeah. <laughs> on, 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 on Do life, you have so an yeah. iPad? Uh I don't. I actually have just a a regular bamboo uh writing tablet. Okay. I do have an iPad mini, and in fact, fun fact, that's how I got started with my YouTube channel seven years ago. With a little iPad <laughs> me. <Wait. laughs> I still have that, but I cannot write on that. I don't have a stylus um, to write on that. So yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. Awesome. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. So yeah, do you want to talk to us about uh, your undergraduate studies? Like what program did you graduate and uh, where you did your studies? Oh, okay. Uh, I'm not sure about in Canada, but in the United States, this is how I did it. I grad- After I graduated from high school, I went to a community college first. And that's where I'm teaching as well, but it's just a different community college. And then I went there for two years, and I transferred to UC Berkeley. And that's a four-year university. And uh, mm-hmm. I study mm-hmm. math, of course. And not just math, though. There was a program called the Math with a Concentration in Teaching. That's actually my major. And after another two and a half years in Berkeley, I graduated. And then I took a year and a half break, and then I started with my master's degree uh, at Cal Poly Pomona in mathematics. And after that, no more schooling for me in terms of as a student, but as a teacher, I think I will always be at school. So yeah, that's about all. Yeah. Oh, so wow. f- for your master's, was it in a specific branch of math, or was it just math in general? Uh, it's just pure math. Okay, awesome. Wow. So is there anything that uh, you particularly are like super interested in, in math, like uh, maybe algebra or calculus or some part of that? Mm, I like number theory when, when I was undergrad. And um, I always knew that my focus was going to be a teacher. And in fact, mm-hmm. when I was in undergrad, I was, my, my, my goal was to be a high school math teacher. So... I didn't really pay too much attention in the theoretical math. I was just more <laughs> focusing on how to improve my teaching skills and also my presentation skills to students, especially the students who have not seen math before or uh, the students who don't quite understand math that well. 
And uh, mm -hmm. I always wanted to learn different ways, different approach to deliver lessons to the high school students or uh, community college students. So that was my goal. But in terms of the math, number theory, I think and that's what I like, and also component work and um, mm -hmm. some probabilities. Also, they are really hard, but like, yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, statistics, I think, is a, a really cool part of math, especially. Definitely. And um, I'm actually majoring in statistics. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so yeah, so we're actually going to talk about um, a little bit more about tips and tricks a little bit later in the video. Okay. But uh, yeah, I mean, sorry, not video. Uh, <laughs> podcast. Uh, podcast. Yeah. So <laughs> for now, we can just talk a little bit about your experience as a student in university. So from your experience... Uh, being a student, the the way that you learn calculus, uh -huh. whenever you did, how does that how does that experience contrast to your current teaching methods? Ah. So, like, what's the difference between how you learned it <laughs> and how you're teaching it right now? Well, things are very different, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, in in what way? So you're talking about like, huh, uh, like, what, fifteen, sixteen years ago? So back in the days, <laughs> we didn't have YouTube, right? So. Everything mm -hmm. was learned either um, via books where you just have to go to the teachers or tutors. Uh, and um, in fact, when I was in high school, I didn't take pre-calc. I was like a year late because I came to the United States uh, in the year of 2000. And I kind of just like a year late in terms of the math. And um, I actually jumped from algebra 2 to calculus without taking pre-calc and trick. I learned that on oh, my own. Wow. So, uh, I, I, the only resource I had was actually just books. My teacher, uh, well, who I respect a lot, but I knew that uh, he wouldn't be able to spend too much time just for me. So I really have to just spend a lot of time on my own, which is actually good because I learned how to study on my own. And mm -hmm. that's one of the things that I can teach my students on how to study on his or her own. And especially nowadays, it's actually much, much easier because we have the YouTube videos. And I also make a lot of videos for my students so they can just watch it so they can study on their own, especially for the students who haven't done math for a while. If they need to review anything, they can watch the videos as a resource. Right. I actually found your channel about two years ago, and this was in the summer after grade 12 before going into first year of university for me. Mm -hmm. And so I haven't I hadn't seen integrals at all. Uh -huh. And so when I saw your videos, that's, you know, you do a lot of integrals on your channel. And yeah. so I was really confused because I didn't know any like integration methods or anything like that. So I was just watching and you're, you're really good at explaining, by the way, because that's how I actually learned mm -hmm how to do integrals for the very first time was just watching your videos and just listening to what you were saying and, and how you were doing like substitutions and integration by parts and everything. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just wanted to say like, thank you for that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah. I think I remember actually too in grade 11 when, uh, or, or grade 12 when we just started calc in school. Uh -huh. And um, I, I'm not going to lie, I just wanted to get a little bit ahead of the class. So I started searching up like <laughs> integrals and stuff like that mm -hmm. and started doing uh, a little more research on it. Mm -hmm. And I think the biggest thing that I found was your YouTube page. Your YouTube page and Khan Academy, I think, are two personal favorites mm -hmm. because like you explained it in a very different way than uh, other YouTube channels because I think you being like a live person explaining it, uh -huh. I think it really helped. Thank you. I think it was really well explained. Thank so you. Thank you. Thank you for that. And just to be, well, just a fun fact, I think, because yeah. <laughs> you yeah. mentioned, like, uh, I have a lot of integral videos on my channel, right? Um, mm -hmm. Perhaps, okay, perhaps, I'm not sure if this is actually true or not, but perhaps the reason is because integral videos are easier for me to make because mm -hmm. I teach integral a lot, especially in Cal 2, like, you know, the first uh, half of the semester, it's just pretty much integrals. So yeah. mm -hmm. perhaps that's one of the reasons why. And another reason is that People seem to like integral videos. So I also, okay, yeah. people are watching it. So let me just make more. So that's why, probably. Yeah, well, as like a high school student, I saw the, the squiggly integral sign. I was like, <laughs> it just really caught my attention. I was like, man, what, like, what is an integral? And that's just, you know, I got caught on the YouTube train of just watching all of your integral videos. So yeah. Nice, nice, nice. But yeah, 
Also, for my next question, yes. I want to ask you,、uh, what inspired you to do the world record 100 integral、oh, video? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So,、um, if you guys have seen that video, then you guys should know that I was talking about a person. His name is Loss, and he was battling、mm-hmm. with cancer, right? So,、yeah. it's about、mm-hmm. a month prior to the recording day, and he, he actually left me a comment. Uh, something along the line like, um, he just he was still in the hospital, but he was watching my video because I just uploaded a video,、yeah. right? And he just left me a message on my comment. I read about it, so I found out, wow, there's someone who is actually watching my video, uh, in the hospital. And then I immediately reach out to him and ask him to see how he is doing. And I also want you to cheer him up, you know. And,、mm-hmm. you know. Perhaps another fun fact: I just had a surgery last week. <laughs> This was、yeah. unexpected. It's it's crazy. But anyway, it's not about me. But、uh, <laughs> and yeah, we just talk a little bit, and then it's like, huh? I really wanted to do something for him. And then at first, I was thinking that I want to make a video dedicated to him. Uh, what should I make? Maybe just a really hard integral. I ask him to see if he has any of his favorite integral. He did. He told me that he had.、Mm-hmm. The the integral of the cube root of tangent x was his favorite, so maybe I can do something really hard. So I told him okay, but then after a few more days, he said no 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 you know what I'm not gonna do that. And it was just like an epiphany I was that I had because that time I was teaching Cal two, and then a lot of students are asking me for examples, example, examples, and、um, there was one there 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 was that day at the gym. That I just all of a sudden say, huh? A lot of students ask me for examples. Why don't I just make、mm-hmm. 100 integrals examples for my students and also for loss? <laughs> and especially, I run marathons, so I said, huh? That should be fun. But I didn't know if I was able to do it or not. I was really worried about myself. <laughs> <laughs> so it was very impressive. It was extremely impressive. Thank you. Then now I just say, huh? What the heck? Let me just go do it. Yeah. <laughs> then I, you know. That day, I just went to my laptop and then I just think, 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 and then just like come up with like you know, as many integrals questions as possible. And then it took me about a week to finish the one hundred questions because I also had to organize all the questions and also make sure I don't do the same type of integral too many times. I also want、right. to make it interesting,、mm-hmm. so it took me a week to finish that file. And then it's okay. Wow, I'm going to record it. And it took me almost six hours to do it. <laughs> wow! <laughs> yeah. Oh wow! So you actually came up with the integral list yourself? I didn't know that. Yeah, for all the one hundred questions, right?、Uh, I did all the questions myself, and of course, some of the questions I got them from my from the books, and some of the questions、mm-hmm. just kind of make it up myself. But I organized、okay. the file myself. That's awesome. That's, That's awesome. That's <laughs> thank awesome. you. Thank That's, you. Yeah. That's really cool. That's really cool. I, I actually think all your marathons are really impressive. I've seen some of your six and seven and a half hour marathons, <laughs> and I'm just, I'm just, I'm just amazed at how someone can just stand there and do math for seven and a half hours. <laughs> like I, I love math and physics, obviously. Like hence we're doing the podcast.、Uh-huh. But it's crazy how you can do that for seven hours. It's it's so inspiring. Thank you. It's, it's Thank really you. good. Thank you. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So、um, I guess this can, this can kind of transition into、um, what kind of got you into math in the first place. We kind of ask this question to most, or if not all, interviewees that come on this podcast,、mm. and it, it's kind of a tradition at this point.、Okay. So, what what was the first thing that you remember that kind of inspired you, that got you into math? I think I, when I was young, I was pretty good with numbers, and、um, mm-hmm. my parents sent me to like、uh, the after school program to learn abacus. You know, it's like the Chinese calculator, the ancient Chinese calculator, like the little thing. Oh right, abacus, right. yeah. So and I got pretty into it, and then fast forward when I came to the United States, perhaps this is also one of this is also one of the biggest reason. That、um, because math is universal, and when I came to the United、mm-hmm. States, I didn't learn. I, I didn't know English too much, right?、Mm-hmm. I didn't learn too much, in, too 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 much English, and then、um, math was the thing. Okay, I was good at, it, so I keep doing math. And then 
Luckily, I will have to say that my high school teacher, Mr. Hill, and also my AP Calc teacher, Mr. Schneider, they were the ones that who truly started to inspire me in learning mathematics. So definitely, my teachers, uh, Mr. Hill and also Mr. Schneider, they have the biggest impact. And uh, another thing is, of course, because I was pretty good in math already, so let me just focus on getting better at it. And um, um, to be honest, because of that, I kind of just kind of ignore the other subjects, <laughs> such as like <laughs> English or like maybe of the G's or that stuff. So then what inspired the teacher in you? Like how did the math become math teacher? My teachers, of course, because... Oh, all just, just your teachers inspired Definitely. You. I believe mm. a lot of teachers who want to be teachers, it's all because they had some teachers in the past that inspired them. And I am one of the case. Uh, Mr. Hill, mm. Mr. Schneider, and also, of course, Mr. Salas is an art teacher, who is an art teacher, and he helped me to get my first job at McDonald's. And oh, I just wow. feel like being a teacher, like the things they have done for me, they have helped me when I was in high school. Um, it's just tremendous, and I want to be like them as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like as a teacher, you can have such a big impact on every single one of your students. Definitely. No, it's, it's just, it's, it's really fulfilling. I, 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 yeah, it's, I, I think especially in high school, because that's like the, perhaps the most crucial age uh, for the student's life, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, interesting story, actually. Hmm. There's, um, unfortunately, even though there are amazing teachers out there, there are also the opposite, that instead of inspiring you to, for a certain subject, completely deter you. Uh -huh. Interestingly enough, the reason why I am not a big fan of biology is because my teacher in India uh -huh. hated me so much that she basically paid no attention to me to the point where I felt neglected, so I just didn't care about the subject. Mm. So I, I, I completely understand the opposite side of it as well because I've been through the negative side of it where a teacher <laughs> can definitely, you know, help you grasp the understanding of it to a whole new level definitely. if they can really teach. Definitely. You know, so that, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's the personal story. <laughs> so here on the podcast, we are both uh, math and physics students. So mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you if at any point in your career, uh -huh. you were also into physics. <laughs> so the only three courses in physics I took was when I was in community college. And the reason mm -hmm. I took them was just because I needed to fulfill my transfer requirements. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so that's pretty much that's pretty much it. I'm you know, I'm always one hundred percent with uh when I when I speak, like so one hundred percent honest with um when I talk to my students or when I talk to anyone. And um mm -hmm. Yeah, but 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 I did okay. I, I got like a A B and B, I mean, if I remember correctly. So okay. I think yeah, well, no okay. offense taken, you know, we all have no our own personal taken. careers, but, but um, what what were the three courses you took? Oh, man, it's probably just like the, the physics, it's the calculus-based physics. Okay, so yeah. just like fundamentals uh, of fundamental. physics? Yeah. Mm. Um, okay. So not much like theory in physics, just the, just the math part of it mainly. Oh, man, again, this is like... 15 years ago, so... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know how to... I, I still know how to draw the free body diagram. Hey, <laughs> okay, that's, that's, that's so good. Cool. That's, that's so good. Cool. <laughs> and then I still know the... Uh, I, I, well, I still know the term EMF, right? And then... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but other than those things, I don't quite remember. <laughs> I... <laughs> okay, well, that's still impressive. That's still slightly impressive. I mean, again, you you do mainly do math. It's just that we do physics as well. So we just wanted to know. That's cool. That's cool that you tried it. Yeah, and then for for physics, um, as as I told you guys earlier, it's like once I got into a subject, I cannot just have the tendency of ignoring the others. So if mm -hmm. I got into physics at first, maybe I will ignore the other subject. And Another fun fact, when I was in 11th grade, I learned about um, computer programming for the first time. Visual mm -hmm. Basic. Do you guys know what that is? Oh, no, I don't. I don't know that. No, uh, not. No. Okay, that's way, way, way before because nobody uses that anymore. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> but, Probably that's why. But, but the thing is that I was so into it. I was really, really into mm -hmm. it when I was in 11th grade. But 
once I got into 12th grade, and I was taking calculus and also Java. But okay. the problem is that the computer at home like during that time, it didn't work if I installed Java on it. So I I just kind of ignored the computer program inside and then I switched to focusing math. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, so it's just like I, I can, I, I really like to focus on one thing. So, so maybe if your computer worked better, you'd be a programmer today. <laughs> um. Maybe because it was just really fun, and then I was really good in Visual Basic. But of course, it's just an introductory course, so I don't know what will happen once I got to the higher level. But I was really mm-hmm. into it. It was really fun. But what what is Visual Basics? Just just really basic computer programming. Okay. The, okay. Is it like uh, to do with? Um, I mean, I'm guessing like visual stuff. So it's not much like code. No, it's it, more. It's coding. It's coding. Oh, it is. But okay. um, I think it gives you. Oh man, I don't know how to describe it. It's, it's like you can. Is it its own language? It's a language, yeah, but it's just. Oh, okay. Oh. okay. I was using Windows XP that time, yeah. so I, I think that's why you guys don't know about it because, again, it's like too long ago. <laughs> no, I'm. Uh, no, I know Windows XP. I mean, I mean, like the Visual Basic, that program is actually oh, no, so long ago. Yeah, yeah, I don't know the Visual Basic think, part. <laughs> I think that was the last time that our school offered that class. Oh, <laughs> in the year of two thousand two to two thousand three. Oh my! <laughs> so okay, long time, long time ago. ago. That's why I was saying long time ago. Yeah, <laughs> we were one year old. What well, one year old? Yeah, and then after years. that, they switched to Java, and that's for AP computer programming. I don't know which mm-hmm. language they're using for AP computer programming nowadays, but um, I was doing Java, and again, just because my computer at home didn't really work when I installed Java, so. I didn't have too much time to get into uh, mm-hmm. the, uh, the Java to learn a language. Mm-hmm. But uh, we, I was uh, you know, studying calculus a lot more. Especially, mm-hmm. I needed the extra time because I didn't take pre-cal or trick. I had to do all that on my own as well. Right. Yeah. So maybe, who knows? Yeah. yeah, so I'm pretty sure in AP uh, computer programming right now, computer science, it is also Java. I'm oh, okay. pretty sure because I was, because um, my friend took 12 AP mm-hmm. and he did Java. Okay. But I think you can choose. I think now because there's so many languages, I think like you have an option uh, where you can choose between Java and a few other, but I think Java is definitely one of them. I see. I, I see. think so. I'm pretty sure. I see. Yeah. Okay, so... um. On your channel, so like, I mean, you have hundreds of videos and then yeah. all of the videos, somehow you make all of the integrals, all of the derivatives different. Mm. So I guess my question is, do you come up with all of the questions on there? And well, if you do and don't, how do you make sure that like they're all different from each other? Like, do you compare like the three years ago, a video that you did and you're like, hey, there's similar derivatives. I'm not going to do this video or something like that. Or do you just do it? Um, sometimes I thought about some new ideas, so um, I have new videos, and mm-hmm. sometimes my videos are actually just a remake from before because like three years ago, five years ago, um, the quality wasn't that good, and then I mm-hmm. am not too satisfied with my explanation, so I will remake yeah. them. And a lot of times, actually the viewers they suggest me the questions like, "How do you do this integral?" And mostly, mm. the integral that they suggest me, I have not seen before. Yeah, so, so oh, that's pretty okay. cool. So let me just work that out and let me make that into a video. And if I do that, I will say, dear so-and-so, just to give them credit, you know, because I got the idea from them. Mm-hmm. Do you ever get a problem suggested to you and you don't know how to solve it? Oh, a lot of times. Definitely, a lot of times. <laughs> really? No. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, there are a lot of questions that I cannot solve from the viewers. Uh, perhaps the most frequent one is the viewers from India. They suggest me to do some mm. IIT yeah. JEE integrals. Oh they yeah, those crazy. exams are really hard. Yeah, they are super crazy. And then like sometimes yeah. I don't even understand what the question is asking, so I cannot solve. It. Yeah, <laughs> that's insane. That's, yeah, that, that's, that's pretty. Good. So what do you do in that in those situations? Do you just not answer them, or do you like search <laughs> up the answer? So, um, before I was say I'm sorry, I don't understand. Um, I I wouldn't know how to do the question, and mm-hmm. if it's a question, you know, you know the most annoying thing for math is that sometimes you see a question that looks so simple, but it's so hard. Those right here, <laughs> like those yeah. kind of questions, will actually got me reading to it. If I see a question that's mm-hmm. like so easy looking, but I don't know how to do it, I will try my best to solve it. 
if I cannot solve it, I'll ask like Dr. Payan or Dr. Uh, Pan or other people to help me out. Yeah, you、mm. probably know、um, the YouTube channel、uh, Presh Talwalker. Oh yeah. He has a lot of、uh, problems like that where it looks super easy, and then you see the solution. It's super long and convoluted. And yeah, definitely. Yeah, I definitely. love watching his videos and just getting lost in the solution. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And I think those are the math. Those are the type of math questions that will get into your head. Yeah. yeah. And he does a lot of geometric stuff as well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which I, I enjoy. Oh, nice, nice. I don't do too much、yeah. geometry because you know I pretty much do the whiteboard. Style, so it's、mm-hmm. really hard for me、yeah. to draw like perfect pictures. So that's one of、yeah. the reasons why I avoid geometry. Yeah, right, did you ever try doing like? All right, I guess not because you do. You just said you only do the whiteboard. But I was gonna ask if you ever tried to do like animations. Um, I try to do some GIF on Twitter. I'm trying to learn some like um how do I can present the materials via PowerPoint, but I don't know how、okay. to do animations. Yeah. Like I, re- you probably know as well. Three blue, one brown. His animations are absolutely amazing. Definitely. And I just, I, I love his his math videos. Yeah, his videos are awesome, incredible. Hmm. Yeah. So for my next question, I wanted、mm-hmm. to ask you. So if you could talk to yourself right now,、uh-huh. but to you back in undergrad, what tips would you give yourself as a math student? As a math student, right? As a math、yeah. student. One thing I will say to myself is that. Don't try to memorize, uh, similar questions. Cause、right. the way I did it, because I was taking so many math courses, and then I feel the pressure. I need to memorize a lot of the、um, different types of questions. Don't do that. Don't do that. But instead,、mm-hmm. try to see the connections between questions and also, uh, the theorems and also the problem-solving techniques. I think that's the fundamental.、Mm-hmm. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Did you ever、mm-hmm. get into uh like logic and proofs? Oh、uh, yeah, I did a lot of proofs back in the days, and、um, those are fun. Yeah, because that really requires you、yeah. to think like really really hard. Do you prefer proofs over computational mathematics, or do you just do computational because it's easier to teach it? I guess. Well, or... for for me right now, it's like you know it's calculus, so it's mainly just like computation now. Right,、mm-hmm. and sometimes、mm-hmm. whenever possible, I do want to demonstrate some proofs for my students because it's a really good way to challenge students to think. And、um, mm-hmm. I would say half and half, half proof and half computational. I like them equally. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. I wouldn't prefer one over the other. Yeah, yeah Ray and I were actually in the same、uh, calculus class、mm-hmm. in or the in the year that just passed,、mm-hmm. and so how our calculus class was made was basically half. Computations and half proofs.、Uh-huh. So as we would as we would go along the course and learn, you know, we went through differentiation, integration,、mm-hmm. and then series and all that stuff.、Mm-hmm. We would first learn the theorems and the proofs, and then we would apply them and do computations and、mm-hmm. things like that. So we really got like the full scope of、um, of first year calculus.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's great. The proof part was definitely a little challenging at first.、Mm-hmm. At first,、uh, but.、Um, I think as we got used to it, I think it it gets a little bit better because I think you just start thinking in proofs, you know, you start thinking more analytically, and I think that that helps a lot, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. So,、um, I guess for one of the final questions, because we're coming up on thirty minutes,、mm-hmm. um, I guess we could choose to extend the podcast. Well, let's see where it goes.、Um, what ex- what inspired you to start on YouTube? Did was there a YouTuber that inspired you, or did you just feel like you wanted to get on a platform? Okay, where you could you know share with the world. So, of course, I must have seen somebody do YouTube. So that that's how I got the idea, and I will have to、mm-hmm. give a shout out to the OG Patrick <laughs> JMT. Oh, Patrick JMT! Definitely, I love right? Patrick JMT, the OG math I YouTuber. Love, oh, he、right? is so. He is the most OG math YouTuber there exists. Right. Oh yeah, he's old.、And、for sure, for sure. I'm saying that OG in terms of pen, in, in terms of pen and paper,、mm-hmm. and of course、yeah. he's definitely the one who kind of gave me the idea. So hey, I can do something like that too. And if you guys look at my oldest video, I was doing math on paper with literally black、mm-hmm. and red pen. Because <laughs> nowadays、mm-hmm. yeah. people are <laughs> saying like. Yeah, because nowadays people are saying why, 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 
Don't you name your channel Black Marker, Red Marker? But then you know, back in the days, it was like Black Marker, Red Marker. Black Marker, Red Marker. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, but I was saying that I saw Patrick's video, so that gave me the idea that some, that's something that I could do. And I knew,、mm-hmm. like about seven years ago, video was going to be a thing. And during that time, I was applying for jobs to be a teacher at community college, and I wanted to have something to be on my resume, and that's what I did. I started my channel、wow. mainly so I can put a link to my channel to show people about my videos on my resume. So that was my one. That's that,、cool. that was my. That's、reason. a creative idea. Yeah, that was my reason. And I tell my students all the time that if you have a YouTube channel, it's perhaps one of the best way to present yourself. Of course, we're talking、mm-hmm. about like a professional YouTube channel that you do things academically, especially later in front to get into academic as well. Yeah,、mm-hmm. so that was、mm-hmm. my reason. And later on, once, um, about like three years ago or so, I started to do math questions just for fun. Yeah, so、mm-hmm. the the purpose, the style, kind of changed. That's awesome.、Yeah. So, did you actually name your channel after the fact that you were using a black pen, red pen, or did you first name your channel black pen, red pen, and then started using the two colors? Okay, so it was before I started my YouTube channel. I wanted to do something to entertain myself when I was teaching, because to be honest, sometimes I get bored. And、um, prior to that, I was teaching with just one marker, so it was too boring, right? And actually, I tried it to teach with、mm-hmm. one marker in one hand. So you can just imagine that I was holding a marker in my left hand and also a marker in my right hand, but I look like an apocus. <laughs> yeah, I look like a apocus. Up, Ap- <laughs> yeah, the thing in the in the water, apocus. The, the the thing has the eight 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 legs. Oh, octopus. Yeah, octopus. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I got too excited and I just I cannot. I have a good time talking to you guys. I get excited sometimes. I just cannot pronounce things properly. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. Like an octopus, right? Yeah. Oh, oh. You can just imagine because yeah, it's like clearly, I didn't hear that.、Clearly. Yeah, you have like、sorry. eight legs in the water. Yeah, yeah, like just like. Oh,、that. okay. In another word. Okay, okay, okay. That makes more sense. <laughs> in another word, like in another word, it's just I look funny, right? If I write with small hands, <laughs> I. I can do a video just for you guys, writing with both hands. Then you guys will see what I mean by that. Just for you guys. Yeah, do it. Mark and Bill just do a video. Like ten years ago, how I used to do it. Just for you guys, you guys will see what I mean. <laughs> yeah, that would be really cool. That would be really cool. Okay, so but I didn't want to look funny. I wanted to look cool, right?、Mm-hmm. And one day, it's like for some reason, I was holding a handout in my left hand, and then accidentally. I put two markers in my right hand, and I start to write on the whiteboard. And I realized that, hey, I can actually write with two markers on the whiteboard at the same time. So that's how it goes. <laughs> oh, okay, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and then black and red are my favorite color. And、um, there we go, black and red pen. Yeah, and it's pretty entertaining, honestly. Like when you switch from one color to another, and it kind of gives it this, like a. Like a a satisfying feel to it because <laughs> you, you know you. you'll keep the X in red and then the whole time it'll just be red and everything else is black or you know whatever however you decide to do it. Thank you. Yeah. One question I have to ask. Okay. When you hold your mic in your left hand for like hours <laughs> at a time, do you get tired? I mean, it looks tiring. It looks like something tiring to just hold a mic for five hours in your hand. Oh my! Like, it doesn't look easy. <laughs> oh my god! I I don't know if you guys have seen the part that I pretty much had to put on my my mic and just kind of stretch a little bit. It was so <laughs> bad. <laughs> yeah, it was really bad. Yeah, because it's the angle that I form. Like you guys know, I form that angle because I have to hold the yeah, mic. Yeah, exactly. It's that ninety degree angle that must be so tough. Yeah, yeah, it's really bad.、Exactly. Yeah, but again, I I run marathon, so I kind of know how to endure. Pains like in the arms、right. or the legs, so、mm-hmm. I'm used to the pains. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and、um, about your marathons,、yeah. what, what like did you just start it because someone asked you to, or did you just start it because you're like, why not? <laughs> well, I started... like what inspired you to start the marathons on YouTube. Oh, you mean YouTube marathons? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the YouTube. Wait, do you do any other marathons? Any other? Yeah, ma- he does re- real no, life do marathons. Real marathons. Oh, oh, wow, oh, wow. Yeah, I run、okay, real so marathons. Like, oh, so is the real marathon what inspired you to do the YouTube yeah, marathon? Yeah, so that's how I got the idea. Oh, like, that makes sense. And then, 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what he said earlier. I guess you just didn't get it. Oh right. yeah, probably. I just cut off. I just cut oh, off. Okay, okay. When you guys were talking, I don't. Yeah, know. Yeah, so it's pretty much that I I run real marathons, right? And um, mm-hmm. I just that's that just kind of gave me the idea that maybe I can do a mar- math marathon as well. So that's what I did. Yeah. And these real life marathons are they like? Are they like competitions or what? Uh, I think I, I'm just doing it for fun, like. Oh, just just for, for fun. the competition, you have to be really good. That like, you have to be able to mm-hmm. run a marathon, twenty six point two miles, within like two hours and thirty minutes, in order to have a chance oh, wow. to compete. <laughs> and then, like the <laughs> elite runners, they can run a marathon in like two hours and five minutes. Wow! Is isn't the world record under two hours now? That's under a controlled environment, but it's still impressive. They did that last year. It's one yeah. hour fifty nine minutes and like forty. Six seconds or something like that. Twenty six. Wait, wha- uh, sorry, I'm really confused. I thought we were talking about math marathons. No, we're talking <laughs> about real marathons. <laughs> wait, what? Wait, wait, wait. What? No. One minute, one minute. I, I uh, sorry, sorry. My, my qu- oh, Wait, one minute, one okay. minute. So the real life marathon that you do is running or math? Running. It's running. Oh no, 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 no. That was that was not what I was asking. Then my question was <laughs> pertaining to the math marathons. Like, what inspired you to do that? Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that was my question. Well, it was, it was uh because of the 100th integral video first, and it was because of loss, and then it was also because I ran the real marathon. That's how I gave. That's how gave me the idea as well. So oh, there's that connection. Okay, that gave you the idea. Yeah, there, there's that yeah, connection. Yeah, you're really lost, Ray. Yeah, sorry, because I-, I was totally following until you said 26 miles. And I'm like, wait, wait, what? <laughs> I'm like, wait, I thought we were talking about math. Where did miles come in? I was so confused. Okay, now it makes a lot more sense. Yeah, mm-hmm. so it's like I have the real marathon, like running marathon experience. That's how, mm-hmm. I gave, that's how that's it awesome. gave me the ex- uh, the idea of like, maybe I can do a math, math marathon. And then because that's of awesome. the running marathon, that's how I know how to endure pain. Like in the arms, also the legs. Oh, mm. yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Strong because of that. Understand. <laughs> Not necessarily strong, but I can just kind of endure the pain. It's all in the mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we are uh, we are pretty late in the podcast now at forty one minutes around. We're good. So I'm, we're yeah, good. yeah. We'd love to have you on again, Steve. Sure. Oh, it, was an, it was an awesome episode. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Maybe next time Thank we can you do so live. Much. Thank you what? so much for coming on. Yeah, I was saying that maybe next time we can do live so we can see the face. So that way it will yeah. be more interactive. And if you guys would yes. like, I can even um I can even figure I, I can even try to figure out how to push three people on OBS so we can do it live. Like just how just like how I did the interview with Professor Penn. So, yeah, that would okay. be awesome. Yeah, we, we can just okay. try to okay. figure okay. it out. Sure. Yeah. 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 I, I I would be totally down for that. Yeah, that sounds awesome. That sounds awesome. Cool. Yeah, so we'll definitely stay in touch for that. Definitely. Yeah, um, just message me on IG. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So for everybody listening right now, make sure to follow on Spotify. Also, we just created our Instagram page for the podcast. It's at math.physics.podcast. And uh, yeah, so this has been episode number 26 with Steve Chow. Uh, I'm your host, Parker. And I'm Ray, and we will see you soon. Bye. Bye.